So if you've been yield farming for a little while, you've probably learned the lesson of like just chasing high APYs and chasing yields is going to hurt you more often than not. At some point, you're going to lose money. You're going to fall victim to impermanent loss. We're really big on blue chips, big cap type stuff. And a question we had in an accelerator call, which is a group coaching program that's built on top of the UIG. You can actually see it here. Colin's kind of highlighting it is where do I find these like the best kind of blue chip, big cap type stuff? And what's the criteria for selecting liquidity pools? So you can see discussing set, setting a minimum TVL threshold, comparing pools, preferences, et cetera. Um, let's dive into it. What, what do you got? See? Yeah, this was great. It was such a good question because a lot of times it's, well, what's the new hot thing that I should get into? And then when I got the question of, I'm just looking to park some great capital in some really solid assets, but I don't really yes, know sir. where to start. Or I know what pool I want, which was that wrapped ETH USDC on mainnet, but there are so many pools, right? And when we actually click it here, I'm on Crystal, just for reference, I'm on Crystal and I, I love to go there, explore and hot pools because there's some really good blue chip pools right here. I love it. So just a note, when you click it, you actually have to scroll down and to find it here. So what we're looking at here is a whole bunch of different wrapped ETH and USDC pools here on Ethereum mainnet. But the question I got on that call was, gosh, there is a lot of pools down here um, on different uh, you know, different DEXs. There's a pancake swap, there's a uni swap. But then I'm looking at these returned APRs because everyone just goes right to that, right, Lucas? Everyone's like, oh, how much yep. am I going to make right here? And the question was, whoa, 142% versus 42% versus 32%. No brainer, this is the one, right, Colin? And I said, okay, let's actually look into this because there's a lot more that goes into this than just let's select the one with the highest APR. So Lucas, if we, if we could dive in, yes, there's a sir. lot of, and maybe grab a notebook because there's a lot of little technical details that I want to go through. But again, as we become more advanced liquidity providers, this information is important. It's not just about selecting the highest return. Well, let's look at this. So the first thing that I look at is the TVL. And now TVL for me is just a trust score uh, from investors in that pool and platform. And so the minimum threshold that we have as a, as a team is about 250,000. There's a TVL greater than 250K. That's a great indication that that's a nice trust score for these assets, a good trust score for the, the platform and the pool, right? That's a rule of now, thumb. Too. Rule of thumb, so, exactly, yeah. exactly. Does also this mean depends. that I can't enter a pool? Well, that's, absolutely not. Of course you can. Just know that there are more risks. I'm not going to get into it in this call. Maybe we could do it later. But there are more risks with smaller TVLs. But I still love these assets. I still love the, the platform. So I'm okay with getting into a pool less than 250K in this example. But, but does that mean it's the best pool to get into? So the next thing I'd like to look at is, well, what – like, what am I actually earning? Because now when I'm looking at this pool, that's 142, almost 143%. Well, it's a no brainer when I'm comparing, comparing it against a 42%. But what am I getting paid out in? And this is a great discussion that we had when you hover over this little money bag here, it breaks it down of, well, I'm not earning all just the fees. Now understand this, Lucas, when users are swapping these assets back and forth in this pool, those are the trading fees. And as you can see, out of this 143%, only eight, almost about 9% of those rewards that you're getting are actually from the trading fees. 134% are coming from an incentive from the platform to incentivize users and investors to put their capital inside this pool. And so to break that down a little bit more, pa PancakeSwap is saying, well, we, we really want, this is all smart contracts, but we really want people to provide liquidity inside this pool to increase this TVL to handle the volume that's coming through. So what if we incentivized it with, and I'm assuming it's Cake or maybe there's another, ad, another token that they're using, but how can we incentivize users to invest in this platform? So why I'm bringing that up, and this is great, I'm not saying this is bad, but will it last? Will this 142% in this pool last forever? The answer is no, it's not going to. As TVL comes in and as things start to shift, the incentivization of the farming tokens starts to decrease over time. And so although this might look like a really incredibly juicy opportunity right now, it may not be in a couple of weeks. So just be aware of this as you're looking for really long-term plays because that's what that was the question lucas was mm -hmm. i want to part capital for a long period of time is a pool with one hundred and seven thousand in tvl better than a pool with seventy five thousand? you know 75 million um with different set of metrics the answer was i don't know you would have to you know dive into a little bit more which i'd love to do here does that make sense so far lucas makes sense 
Make sense? Okay. So the next thing we like to look at as well is, hey, well, what's the volume flowing through these pools? Because again, the vast majority of returns are going to come from trading fees unless they have an inflated. And I love how Reed, one of our instructors, always says this, that it's an inflated metric, meaning that that 143% is not going to most likely stay mm -hmm. for a long period of time. So you have to like, if this did not have any farming fees, it would be about 9% return. Is that something that attracts you? Maybe, maybe not. But anyways, next thing we like to look at is, okay, well, what's the volume and the fee tiers? Now, how does the fee tiers play into this? Well, the volumes, meaning how much of the assets are being swapped back and forth, is multiplied by the fee tier. And that fee tier is the percentage that users pay to swap their assets back and forth. And so I, I may actually made an article in the UIG. So uh, if you're in the UIG, uh, let me know and I can I can and, make sure you see that. But you're on YouTube. And, you know, YouTube's not a full-time job, so these videos yeah. are usually a few weeks old. And, you know, we don't always jump on things. But if y'all would like a video on, like, could you explain fee tiers? I'm sure we could have a really good discussion around oh, that. Yeah. So let us know in the comments. Absolutely can. I'm, I'll do it very quickly here is, is that the volume required to earn the same amount of rewards is um, a lot less inside of this 0.3% fee tier in comparison to the 0.01% fee tier. Mm -hmm. Said in another way, if the same amount of volume flowed through both of these pools, this 0.3% fee tier would generate 30 times the amount of fees to go to investors than this 0.01% fee tier. Now, the question I get all, all the time is, what does that mean I just go into the highest fee tier? Because that's the highest percentage of rewards I'm going to get. The answer is no, absolutely. That, that, you know, that's absolutely not. That's not the only thing we like to look at, right? We like to look at, well, what's the volume in comparison to the TVL it, taking into account the fee tier? And this is where you can see it gets a little bit technical. When we're getting into the weeds, it's not just about picking the highest return right now. It's about picking one with really solid TVL. Oops, didn't mean to click that, Lucas. Really solid TVL really consistent, high volume, and take into consideration the fee tier. Okay, Lucas, mm -hmm. dive in just a little bit deeper with me here. Let's take a, let's compare, um, let's not look at the top one here. Let's compare just two Uniswap pools here. Let's look at, mm. yeah, uh, yeah, let's look at, um, uh, right here, uh, Uniswap V3, 0.05% fee tier, and the Uniswap 0.3% uh, mm -hmm. uh, fee tier. So I wish I could... Uh, Maybe, maybe I, could, I don't know. I, I could filter it and pin them together That's here. Fine. But yeah. really what I'm looking at is like, okay, TVL of this one is 75 million. TVL of this one, 145 million. That very much satisfies our criteria. Yep, those are two massive pools. Then I take, take a look at, okay, well, there's $29 million of volume flowing through this pool. And there's $130 million of TVL flowing through this pool. So now what we, the, what we like to look at, Lucas, is, well, what's the ratio of volume to TVL? Well. The straight ratio is that there is more, there's a higher figure here of volume to TVL in this pool. And so you would think, well, if that's the case, there must be a higher return. But that's not necessarily the case because, again, take into consideration the fee tier. Mm -hmm. um, when we take a look at this pool, 29 million to 75 million, that, that ratio is smaller than the pool we just covered. But because it's a bigger fee tier, more rewards are being collected based on the volume. Hopefully that makes sense, Lucas. So yeah, that's why sense. when we yeah. take a look at the APR at 42% right here, and we take a look at the APR projection on the 0.5% fee tier at 16, well, mm -hmm. that's why um, there's a, a, a difference in those pools, mm -hmm. even though this one has more volume. So again, mm -hmm. all of these things have to be put together to make these decisions. We're looking yeah, at I think a lot of people are just randomly yeah. getting into stuff and I'm exactly. just like, what That's is happening? Like if you think you can run a DeFi business in a portfolio, it's why we have the portfolio review section too. Yes. The actual pairs you're picking. Yeah. That we get, we got to look at that, but there's so much more to it. It's like, what's the diversification of your portfolio? Um, what's the fee tiers? What's your range? What's your overall strategy? What's your rebalancing strategy? What's your snuggle strategy? What's your, like, it's not just about, Oh, this is the best pool. And I'm seeing that all over on YouTube and I'm kind of like freak. I have a love hate relationship for YouTube because people are really missing it. It's so much. We probably have 20 hours of educational stuff. Like it takes that commitment. If you don't have that commitment to mastering this and making so much freaking money that it's ridiculous, then you ain't going to make no money if you're just clicking buttons and hoping. Absolutely.
And, and and Lucas, can I just say something? Yes. People might be listening to this and go, what? This is so complex. There's so much information that he's given me. But I guarantee you do this a few times and you yeah. can very quickly scan this and go, yeah, this is the one that I'm going to get into give because this, this and this. Yeah, give it a month. It's the skill set is all I'm yeah. trying to communicate here. It's the education Agreed. and the skill set because – and I always say this is not all pools are created equal. You're going to look at this pool and just go, well, I'm going to get in because it's the highest return. Is that going to be the highest earner over the course of the next month? I don't know. I have no idea. I can't really mm -hmm. predict that. But we can mm -hmm. look at all the metrics involved over time. And mm -hmm. now we can make decisions. Again, why I love this question was because I want to get into a pool for a long time. How long mm -hmm. is a long time for him? I think he said like three to six months. I'd love to park wide range Ethereum mm -hmm. mainnet and that's why he really wanted a deeper breakdown of all this stuff because it's a little bit more technical than just what's the highest APR return. Let me just dump some cash into there and hope it all mm -hmm. works for me. So, Lucas, that's what I got. I, I just I love this so stuff. Good. I think it is so vastly important when you're really starting to create a business around this as opposed to just kind of gambling it or just tossing it in places and and hoping it works out, which unfortunately I see a little too much in the DeFi space. So that's my mission bring education to this and, and make wise investment decisions with your Let's capital. Let's go. Yeah, and people will randomly get into stuff and maybe they'll get lucky with like the market or the coin kind of does well for a couple of days. Then it turns and then they panic and they get emotional and then they're in DeFi for a whole month or two. And then they're like, it doesn't work. I yeah. was literally editing three new testimonials that are coming on the website. And the testimonials would tell you that the case studies, I, I'll say, would tell you that the opposite is true. But these people were studying for three, four months before they started yes. building their portfolio. They took their time. And now, um, I mean, Joy is a bit of a older case study, but like it just got me excited to see $27,000 a month in DeFi income. That's that's real. Like that's not made up, but it didn't happen overnight. It was like, let me commit to mastering this skill set, like you said, um, and remaining unemotional because I know what to do. Uh, whatever the market does, I'm going to do. Absolutely, let's go. Sir. Yep. Let's go. Uh, if you like this video, like it, subscribe to this channel. Uh, we will leave some other content on the four corners of your screen. Study this stuff. If you're like, hell yes, I want to join a community that discusses this stuff on a daily basis and gives a high level of education from literally the best team in DeFi, then the UIG may be a really good fit for you. Do check it out. Uh, with that said, we're going to get out of here. Peace.